Hi, I'm Mike Henry, and welcome to the 2020 edition of Select Paint, Select Clear. So now that Procreate 5 is out, I figure it's time to refresh the Select Paint, Select Clear video. Um, if you go back, you'll still find it. I'm not going to delete it from the channel, but it is going to be considered the legacy version because it's on an older version of Procreate, and people have been asking for updated versions with all of the new UI and new tools and things like that. So here is the new version. We have a fun little shape here that has some overlapping stuff and I think that this is going to be the clearest way to show how the select paint select clear method works. First things first, let's grab a shadow color. I think that for the purposes of this we're just going to go with something kind of desaturated, a little bit blue, uh, just to test it out. Let's create a layer here set it to multiply and I'm just using the sort of generic soft airbrushy brush and let's draw a line across okay good so that is going to be very clear as to our shadows and how they work so what is the select paint select clear method what this is is it's a way especially with procreates layer limits to try and get a few lighting layers and to organize the way that you apply them and clear them without having to create extraneous layers. Now let's look at our layer stack for a second. Over here we have our flats, which is just right now called new group. I didn't bother naming anything. I don't really do that that much in Procreate because the flow is a little bit more challenging than in Photoshop just because you have a keyboard in front of you. Uh, but here we've got this flats layer right here. We have a background, which is just our background color and then a texture over it. We're not gonna really worry about that. Maybe at the very end we'll do something with that. But we've got these flats. In Photoshop, what I might do if I were coloring in this method is I might have a folder on top let's create a folder I might have this folder here right now also called new group uh, that would just be set to multiply and then every layer that I create in here would then automatically be multiply because there's no limits really other than the performance of your machine when you're dealing with Photoshop with procreate though we have these hard limits so let's go up here really quickly and go to canvas and look at the information for our canvas so with this one, this is what it's set to, you can see on the right, and if we go to layers, our maximum layer count is 58. So that is putting some limits on us that makes it so that we have to be a little bit more economic with our layer limits. So how do I do that when I'm doing this? Now I paint in different methods depending on what I'm trying to accomplish, but I think that the one that's the most applicable for Procreate, it's at least out of my own repertoire, is where we have this layer right here that you see highlighted, and this is set to multiply. We can then set a color, and we can use it as our shadow layer. Now, the way that we will actually do that now, in an organized way, is by using our separate flats. So first, we're gonna start at the bottom most flat, tap on it anywhere on the layer, except on that little check or on that little N, and we're going to tap on select right there. What this does, you see it also brings up the UI for the selection, which we actually don't need right now, so we're gonna go ahead and just kinda tap away anywhere you want. Um, that is going to select that purple squiggle. Now. We're going to do some bad painting here, that's fine, because I'm just trying to show you the methodology, and I'm also doing this with one hand, since my other hand is using the is holding the microphone. So let's assume for a minute that the light is coming from the top right and shining to the bottom left. We're going to use our soft brush here with our light blue set to multiply, so it's going to come out dark, and we're going to start painting in the shadow. We're going to go around here, and then a little bit down here. Okay, we're not going to get into ambient occlusion and direct shadows and all of that right now because this is just about the selection method. We're going to put that little cast there, let's put a little bit of a cast here, and let's just say that these little things might cast in some way as well. Oh, sorry, and this thing right over here. We're, we're really kind of fudging this, but oh well, at least it'll... It'll look kind of good. It'll look like some awesome 80s pop art. So then what we do, so we're still on this layer right here that's on top of everything, and you can see where it hits the yellow, where it hits this sort of sea foamy greeny type part, the shadow is on top of it. Well, 
because we're trying to keep everything simple. We don't want to make new layers and do any type of fancy thing there. So what we're instead going to do is we're going to take the next flat up our stack and we're going to select it. This is where select paint select clear comes from. We selected and then we painted and now we're selecting that again, coming back to our shadow layer, tap on it, and then we're going to select clear. That's going to clear away everything that's just in that selection on that layer. So as you can see, oh actually I just noticed one thing that I forgot to do. I forgot to also paint the underside of this purple squiggle. So let's do that. Cool. Um, so we've selected the orange ball. We have cleared away from the shadow. Now we reselect that orange ball. And now when we paint, because we are selecting a layer that is on top of the previous one, it's not going to select anything that's on that purple squiggle. Because of the nature of how that purple squiggle is sort of its own thing. And we don't have to worry about there being any overlap because it is... The, the orange ball is on top of it in the layer stack. So let's also go ahead and this is, well, this is like really bad approximating, but we're gonna do that. I did not really plan this. Okay, and then next we move up the chain again. So let's move up the chain. Select the pink. We're ignoring that texture. In fact, I can even, just for simplicity's sake, I'll merge that in there. So we're gonna select this next ball, which you can see is down here. We've selected it, we go back to our layer, our shadow layer, we select that, or excuse me, <laughs> we select our pink ball, then we clear from the shadow layer, there. Now it's cleared again, and in the same way, we're not going to have to worry about overlap because those, that layer is on top of everything else. Now we just shade that in as well, hopefully better than that when we're actually doing the piece and move to the next one, which I have these together. One thing in order to conserve layers in Procreate that you can do is when you have flats that aren't touching, you can keep those flats together because they're really easy to work with. Right now, let me turn off the selection so we can see well. Right now, both of these, they don't touch in any way. So if we want to cut and move them or we want to paint, there's no problem whatsoever. We could even come here and we can select this, just these two. We can color shift them to something else and we're all good, they're, they're completely separate. So that's nice. Now let's take and select it and clear it from our shadow layer. And then here's a, here's a trick if you don't know it. If you press and hold on the select button up here, it will reselect whatever you last had selected, which can be really nice in your process. So now we just go back to this layer and we paint. We get our shadows on here. Same thing here, again, hoping that we paint it a little bit better when we actually go to do the piece. And there we go. It's all shadowed and it has just one shadow layer. You could even, now that I'm looking at this, you notice that the orange ball and the pink ball aren't touching. These could even merge together. And now you have complete control over all of this stuff without having to worry about anything touching and you have all the control you need in order to adjust things. Uh, one reason why it's nice to have all of this unified on one layer is when you take this layer right here, the shadow layer, you can always change its colors. Go to your hue, saturation, and brightness. And as you see here, when I shift this around, we get some really different vibes off of this. We can darken it more, lighten it more, adjust its saturation. All of those things. So we have all of that control in our shadow layer. We also have lots of control in our flats. If I select just this ball, I can make this ball whatever color I need it to be for our piece. Now, this is not necessarily where this stops. 
Uh, I'm not going to go through an entire thing where we talk about all lighting and what the techniques might be, but let's just say for a minute we also have a light that's shining from the bottom left, creating a rim light on our object. Let's just take white, because that'll be super easy, select the purple squiggle that we've got, go to this layer that's just set to normal, nothing fancy, and we paint our rim light. Let's just paint it really bright and obnoxious just to start. Okay, then we move up the chain, we select that, we clear from our rim light layer, and then we reselect it. And now we have, we paint our rim light here and here. Again, not, not the best rim lights in the world, but you get the picture. And then let's repeat the process on our last little object that we have. And we will just quickly paint in these rim lights as well. And then just for the sake of it looking somewhat okay, let's lower that opacity a little bit. So you can see that by doing this, we have control, we also have minimal layer usage, and you can start using this method for anything. Here we did it with shadows and a rim light. You could also do it with your highlights. If I just really quickly created some sort of a bright yellow, and then put it right, let's say, on the purple, select the purple, and we go along the purple, and then lower its opacity just because we don't want it to be like insane here. Then we select the next one up, we clear, reselect it, paint that highlight in, paint that highlight in, again, a little badly. Let's change this to overlay just so that it's really obvious what's happening here. Actually, it's not, oh wait, overlay, brighter, there we go. Okay, so it's, a, it's ugly, but let's just go with it. And then we're going to select the next one up and clear it and then reselect it. And now we put in that highlight as well. And then one thing that's kind of cool is because we've got all these things unified to some degree, we can use our shadow and we can select our shadow and then we can delete away from our light, clear. And now our light is right here our rim light is right here and our shadow is right here. So by using this methodology, you can go through and you can do bounce lights, you can do ambient occlusion, you can do hard shadows, you can do everything that you need to do. Um, and it'll all be contained on these layers, which is uh, pretty nice. And I think this methodology is the cleanest. There's a little bit of planning that you have to do, but you can always go back through and you can augment things. And the absolute last thing I wanna mention here is that if you have something that you want to add to it, as long as the thing that you're adding is on top, you should have no problems whatsoever. If something is inserted in the middle, you will have to go through and adjust something here or there. But for instance, if I come here and I create a new thing, let's say I want a weird squiggle that just goes like that. Sure, a squiggle that goes like that, why not? And we, you can see that because of all of our other lighting, it's all messed up looking, but that's okay because this thing is on top. So if you select it and then you clear and then select it and clear and select it and clear, it's now its own object that needs its own paint and its own shadow and all that kind of stuff. And you don't have to worry about it at all. It just gets added on top. So. I hope this new explanation of select paint, select clear with the new UI is clear and I hope that it uh, is helpful to you. I think that in Procreate, layer management is always a very important part. And I think that this, using this methodology has been the one that I found to be the most consistent for me and the way that I work. And I hope that it helps you out as well. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing it. And otherwise, I'll see you on all the normal, regularly scheduled videos. And if you're looking for me on the internet, these are the places where you can find me.